A fertility evaluation is really evaluating both patient and partner. If there's a female patient, we're really trying to get a better evaluation of her anatomy. We want to make sure the uterus and the fallopian tubes are healthy, and we want to get an assessment of her overall egg reserve. For the male partner, we really want to get an assessment of his overall sperm quality and sperm numbers. So during the evaluation, for the male partner, we'll have him undergo a semen analysis and some basic blood work. Probably one of the most important things that we look at in terms of the blood work is a genetic carrier panel to better assess the couple's genetic risk to their offspring. For the female partner, she will undergo either a hysterosalpingogram, what we call an HSG, or a saline sonogram um, to better assess the overall uterine cavity. And we're really looking for fibroids, polyps, scarring in the uterus that may prevent her from implanting. Um, and we want to get a better assessment of the fallopian tubes just to make sure they're healthy. In order to evaluate a woman's egg reserve, or her egg number, or how many eggs she has left. Um, we do a number of different things. Um, one, we'll draw some blood to take a look at some hormones. We're looking at her AMH, or anti-malarian hormone level, along with her FSH, or follicle-stimulating hormone level. Both these hormones will give us a better assessment of her overall egg reserve. We will also do an ultrasound to take a look at her ovaries. And it's, you know, really for women, when we do an ultrasound focusing on the ovaries, we can get a direct assessment of what their general reserve is, whether it's really robust, whether she's right there, appropriate for her age, or if it's low. The typical infertility evaluation is going to take about a month, starting with a woman's menstrual cycle. When we're trying to assess a woman's egg reserve, um, the reason it's so important is because, you know, men are very different than women. Um, for, me for women, we're born with a fixed number of eggs at birth, and that number drops exponentially as we get older. So when we're evaluating the egg reserve, we're really trying to identify sort of how many eggs she has left. The AMH hormone, the anti-malarian hormone, is a hormone that's produced by the small eggs in the ovaries. and you know, very generally speaking, the more eggs you have in your reserve, the higher your AMH level is going to be. So ideally, I would love to see an AMH level greater than 1.5 or 2. That's going to reassure me that the egg reserve is pretty solid. When I see an AMH level that's lower, it strictly speaks to egg number. So it tells me that this patient has a slightly lower egg number or egg reserve. It tells us nothing about egg quality, but egg number. FSH, or follicle-stimulating hormone, is another hormone that can give us some information about a woman's ovarian reserve. FSH is a hormone that, that's produced by the pituitary gland um, in the brain. So there's a small gland in the brain that secretes FSH. And FSH actually acts like food or fuel to help develop a dominant follicle every month in a woman who has a regular menstrual cycle. And the FSH hormone um, correlates indirectly with the woman's overall egg reserve. So when you're young, when a woman's young and she's got tons of eggs in her ovarian reserve, her brain will secrete just a small amount, maybe two, three, four units of FSH, and the ovaries will respond like that. And so if I were to check a young woman who has a solid egg reserve, if I were to check her FSH, it's gonna be nice and low. And that tells me that her brain is not working so, so hard to stimulate her ovaries. If you look at a woman who has a much lower egg reserve, she doesn't have as many eggs left in her ovaries, the brain has to work much harder to stimulate her ovaries to develop a dominant follicle. And so initially, maybe the brain will secrete two or three units. Nothing will happen. The brain will then secrete four units, six units, eight units, 10 units, 12 units, 14 units, 16 units. Finally, one of the ovaries kick in. And so that, in that scenario, the FSH level is gonna be much higher. So maybe that's an FSH of 16, for example. An FSH of 16 correlates with a much lower egg reserve. LH is another hormone that you might hear about during your fertility evaluation. LH stands for luteinizing hormone. That's the hormone that typically induces ovulation. And so sometimes during a treatment cycle, um, you may be following the LH surge. Um, sometimes for um, certain populations um, of women that, ha that have PCOS or other things like that, we may assess a baseline LH level with the baseline FSH level. Um, but an LH um, hormone level is typically associated with ovulation. So regardless as to what the results come back as, our goal is to really work with our patients, meet you where you're at, because I can make my medical recommendation, I also want to know what you're comfortable with, and our goal is to get you to the finish line.